Mama. Hey y'all, it's Jamie with Honey Hole Mountain Homestead. How are y'all? I know it's been a little bit since we've been on here. We had a little uh, family emergency come up and we had to go down to Louisiana for a little bit. And then we've had a few more things and the weather, it's just been raining and storming. We've had tornadoes. Um, hadn't got too bad. We hadn't had no damage here. I know, you know, we have a lot of, you wouldn't think we would flood, but <laughs> we live on top of a mountain, so you really wouldn't. But it gushes down and it washes away the soil and everything so we've done a lot of prep work around here to make it where it's not so bad so we've been lucky with all this rain that it hasn't washed anything away but there's not a lot of update of everything going on we uh got the parts in for the backhoe super excited about that a couple weeks ago got them in Wes was down there fixing on it and opened up the box and the parts were damaged so that long wait to get them and then we had to reorder so they just got in this past friday i think or the no it was yeah because he worked on it all saturday and sunday so um last night they were able it's up and running so yay it's a lovely sound to hear but it's kind of it's almost may 1st it's kind of peak time for getting stuff in the garden and i still don't have my garden spot ready so i was kind of down and out thinking you know maybe i'm just not just not meant for me to garden this year i'm just going to give up i was ready to throw my hands up but you know there's still that aching and urging inside of me that was telling me to keep going you know figure out a way there's a way um like i'm an open book and like i tell most everybody you know i have uh i've struggled with anxiety and everything so it was getting the best of me and i was you know there's days you wake up and you just don't want to leave out of the bed but, you know, I always got up and I went out to the greenhouse or went out here to the garden, even if it just made me just checking the eggs. So, cause I did not want to get depressed about not having a garden, you know, deep down that urge was, it was burning and I wanted to be out here. I wanted to be in the dirt. I wanted to be planting. I wanted to be doing something. So I was racking my brain about, you know, what could I do? Um, you know, we had graduation and was graduating in a couple weeks. So that kind of put a, you know, we didn't really have a lot of money to spend on doing anything major. So I went to Amazon and bought some of the black felt containers. I think they were like the five gallon felt containers. We went and bought some super soil from one of the landscaping companies. And so far I've got, I think it's, I think I filled 25 of them up. So I have, um, I put two peppers per um, five gallons. So I have 22 peppers planted and I think there's 11 tomatoes planted in them. Um, I'll show y'all a short video of that. I'll try to link it in here. Um, I did get some little containers it's back over here beside me here. You can see that way I, I planted some beets and uh, radishes. Just It's still been cool. It was 48 degrees this morning. So hopefully they'll do good. If not, I'm going to come back in and plant some uh, cucumbers and squash there and I'm gonna build me some little A-frame trellises and I'm just gonna try to, you know, overcome this because we all have obstacles and we can't let, you know, just cause that back ain't fixed and that garden spot ain't fixed. There's so many ways and I teach everybody how to container garden. And, you know, I'm with master gardeners, I'm always giving people other resources to, if you don't have spot to garden, how to do it. So it was kind of one of those okay take your own advice here kind of thing so i have if i can turn it into a container i'm turning it into a container um per, i'm going back to get some more super soil this weekend i'm going to purchase some of the little kitty pools and i'm going to turn those into some little beds for some of my melons and with some uh trellising on them um some more of the i ordered 25 more of the felt bags i have three green stalks and I mean, there's a lot I can plant inside. I mean, all these beds are my flower beds. They're all my perennials, all my... Yeah, but you see this spot here, I mean, it's just got lilies. And I mean, there's a few things scattered out. 
but I still have room I can plant something in there. So I'm just gonna mingle my vegetables and my flowers together. So, I mean, we need pollinators for our vegetables, so why not just mingle them together? Um, I got these trellises. I'm gonna, uh, I got my melons already started in the greenhouse. There's so much stuff in the greenhouse. Um, I plan on still selling my plants at the farmer's market. Um, so they're about ready. I gotta pot them up to a little bit four inch pots. So that way they'll be ready uh, for the first week in May, the uh, first Saturday, so I can go and uh, sell those. I've already got people asking for them. So everything that I grow out is heirloom vegetables. So it's not stuff that you'd go to Walmart and Lowe's and find. So um, pretty excited. I'm, I'm getting the motivation back. It's warming up. Um, we're having field trips and everything for the end of school year. We just got back from a uh, baseball game with Brian. He had, uh, we were over an hour away. We went with the school to watch the ball game. So Alyssa's got softball game tonight, which that's winding down. I think she's only got two or three more games left. So that'll be coming to a halt. The backhoe is running. Um, I think they got a few more things to work on and it'll be going uh, enough that he can start clearing out the pool area because to this point we need a pool that way the kids are entertained and we've been promising them and promising them a pool so you know that was one of our main goals too so i'm kind of putting my garden to the side because you know we can, we can still work on it and i can have you know i mean it's just may if we can get it done by the june i can still be planting my second round of stuff that i would be planting like some more tomatoes i can plant squash i can plant zucchini i can plant cucumber stuff that um usually if you start here in central arkansas 7b if you start it uh early you have you deal with like uh vine bo bowers bowers bores <laughs> the uh vine borers so i kind of will be missing that in the squash beetles so uh so i'm not i what i can supplement i can go to since i am at the farmer's market every weekend uh between me selling my plants and at the um know it to grow it with master gardeners booth i can supplement what i don't have here because canning is a big reason why um we have our garden to be self-sustainable um we are we already have uh we bought two rabbits well, i didn't even buy them actually a, a friend gave them to us um so the kids got two pet rabbits kind of transitioning them that way they won't be too in shock when we get our meat rabbits we're fixing to start on those hutches for the meat rabbits i've been watching tons of videos that a lot of y'all have posted on meat rabbits reading lots um we are with the chickens still we have 10 ducks arriving this week um just waiting for mcmurray murray mcmurray to send me my uh shipping on it it said it ships the week of april 25th so uh kids are super excited about that i'm excited about the duck eggs um we do have meat chickens coming. Um, I believe they're at the end of May. I have 25 coming. We just started out small. That way, you know, it'll be our first time doing it. And I don't want to overload us. We do have uh, just me and Wes that'll be doing it. And of course, the kids, if they want to join in. So it'll be new to us. Um, I have turkeys coming this fall because I've already pre-ordered those. Um, I do. I'm thinking about quail. Simply, I, as a kid, I remember... Um, eating pickled quail eggs so i'm curious you know i'm all about that but right now we have so many chicken eggs that i don't know what to do with them i am cooking everything i can with chicken eggs i um, actually just washed out some gallon pickle jars i got some lime so i can start water glassing some so that way we have them this winter when they slow down we're getting about a dozen a day i'm selling them but we're still not uh there's a me and everybody else can't eat them fast enough i am i do have a few neighbors i'm fixing to start passing them around to um but you know i'm trying to think of everything self-sustainability i'm still trying to uh you know our future plan is to be able to have cows and goats and uh maybe a pig or two just to raise for ourselves we cannot do it here on our four acres on the mountainside but we do have a uh, pasture uh, property that is, you know, we can rent and stuff. Um, so that was something we'd look forward to in the future. Um, right now, my biggest thing is I have picked up fig trees. I've picked up blackberry bushes, raspberry bushes. I'm looking for mulberry trees, which seem to be unavailable and out of stock everywhere. So if you know where there's any mulberry trees, hit down below and comment and let me know. Um, I might have to even find cuttings that I can root. Um, Oh, I do. In one of our uh, last videos, we talked. We had willow trees that we uh, put to, in the water to root. And I got some 
I mean, you can't see them. But I got all the super soil in the pots, and I'll have to link the video. I had to show y'all in the back of the video here in the last part of it. I'll link. Um, they are got gorgeous leaves on them and root systems that are amazing. So I'm fixing to get those all potted up. Um, we will plant a few of those around here, but a lot of those will go to the farmer's market for sale. Um, my dream is to have a plant nursery one day. Not a big plant garden center that you see. I want looks like a mom and pop uh, nursery, you know, heirlooms, variety stuff to sell for us plants. Uh, different varieties of flowers that you don't that's not common uh, a lot of perennials and pollinator plants so that's my dream even if it's just me advertising it on facebook or take them to the farmer's market that's my dream so i'm slowly starting to add stuff so that dream can come a reality we always try to start with a five-year plan well we're running down we got like two years left on our first five-year plan so what's well, not to throw another five-year plan in there um there's not a lot blooming right now. We have our dianthus is blooming. Um, oh, our bearded iris are starting to bloom. I have some of those that um, I had got from a lady that was Gerald Richardson. Um, he was a hybridizer. Hybridize, hybridizer? He bred to iris. And um, he passed away. And unfortunately, the people that bought his property, they were going to bulldoze his house down and just clear it off and uh, do away with it. So she was able to uh, gather up all the iris in his yard, which there was tons. And for shipping costs and stuff, we could get priority boxes of them sent. So I think I ended up with like four different priority boxes. And I'm talking about big priority boxes. Like, like big priority boxes. Um, so I probably have over 100 to 200 different iris that I got from her. Plus some that I've traded for, some that I've picked up, and some that I've ordered. Um, they're loud today. Y'all loud. Uh, we just moved the guinea chicks out to the br brooder we built. Um, I think Wes has a video he's trying to finish up on him building that. Um, because they were just getting so loud inside the house. Um, because we were trying to, it was still cold and everything. And I didn't want to have them outside or anything because for some reason guineas are so finicky um we have had such bad luck trying to raise them outside in in the brooders and everything so i could just kind of baby them inside the house and they've done pretty good they're um about four or five weeks old now so they're out in the brooder we still have the light on them a little um but they're eating and drinking they're doing good so um we'll move the ducks in there with them and then they'll all transition out um trying to think i've just I've just really been planting flower seeds. I've planted a lot of uh, zinnias, uh, cosmos. What else did I plant? Periwinkle vinca is just an annual. I bought at uh, Brashear's Nursery um, that's local to me here um, just for my annual plant so I can have some color. Um, now, while I'm waiting on stuff, I have some roses that I've planted on the arbors behind me here. I see. I think right here we planted fruity petals. It's a kind of pinky, orangey color. Um, I stopped at a nursery in Dumas, Arkansas called Newswangers. Um, I think it's like an Amish maybe. Um, it might not, I might be wrong. I think it's like an Amish uh, nursery. I got a big uh, Ladybanks rose I planted on this side. I have an iceberg climbing on this side. And on that far side, um, my sister had a neighbor in Louisiana, um, in Shreveport that, um, uh, I think the, she was 90 something. And I think it was like her mom's, uh, right. It was a seven sisters rose. It's, it's a climbing rose with little pink things. And I took a couple cuttings and now it's probably two or three foot tall. Then it's starting to come up over there. I don't know if it'll bloom this year or not. Uh, the lady banks is blooming. I'm trying to think what all we have this right here. This is our garlic that we tried in containers last fall. And it's actually, I mean, it's really sturdy. It surprised me. It's one of the um, hard necks. And over here in this one is one of my red, red ch chestnut garlic. It's not quite as tall, but um, it's my first time growing garlic, so I'm excited. Um, my dahlias are starting to pop up. I planted dahlias, I planted a lot last year, and I planted some the year before. It was my really my first year in them and everybody said you gotta dig them up when the frost comes you gotta do all that y'all i've never dug up my dahlias 
they keep multiplying. And the ones that were two years old were huge last year. I don't do nothing special. This, let me see if I can show you. I'm on my phone today, so. But right there, I don't know if you can see it or not. Inside those tomato cages is some dahlias that are coming back. They're huge. It's not even May yet, and they're over, one's over a foot and a half, two, almost two foot tall. All of them are Aztec and Oriental and hybrid uh, lilies. I have over 100, 150 of those. They're all coming up and nice, but the dogs didn't get into this winter. Um, I do have some, see it right there? Some green globe artichoke. I planted, I think there's three or four of those I've planted around the garden. Um, I'm just, the allium, allium. I guess that's the, uh, I planted some globe master ones. We have some shorter ones up there. Um, I got strawberries in the garden, one of the garden stalks, the green stalks. Lemon balm, you know. I trimmed it to the ground this, uh, probably about a month ago. It's already taken over again. Don't start lemon balm unless you plan on keeping it in check. Maybe in a container. Um, Creeping Jenny is the same way. It's everywhere. So you can tell it started out in the pot and now it's over here. Anywhere it falls, it starts. Um, other than that, there's not a lot going on. We did stain the house. I don't know if y'all can tell. It's not... It was like a reddish color. Um, we're going to be repainting this white with a blackish trim. Uh, we have plans to expand the back deck by the greenhouse. We cut down some trees. We still have a lot more to do. So, haven't done a lot. Like I said, anxiety, depression, everything getting me down. I was almost to the point of giving up and just not doing nothing. But that's not in me. It's, I'm not a quitter. <laughs> uh, you know, it's that devil in you telling you to give up and everything but there's a yearning inside of you and it's just it's how I reach and worship and do everything with my God you know I know some of y'all um might have different values and stuff but we're Christian and we pray and um sometimes you're just getting out in the gardens what do we need to open your heart and open your mind and get things out that are bothering you and sometimes that's where you find your answers to a lot of stuff so you know I couldn't give it up. I couldn't just say, no, I'm not going to do it this year. I'm not, I, I don't care if it's just that green stalk on the back porch, um, throwing some seeds out here and there. I'm going to do something because I have it in me. I want to be self-sustainable. I want to have a produce for my family. I mean, I have six kids and a granddaughter. I want to be able to know what's on their plates when I'm feeding them, know that I cooked it, and it, you know, and I know what ingredients it is. I know the dirt that it was grown in. There's no chemicals used on our farm. I want that for us. Uh, I want, we're raising meat rabbits and everything. I want to know that meat. I want to know it's healthy. Um, if we purchase from a local farm for our beef and pork right now, you know, I want to have a good relationship with them. So if anybody's in central Arkansas that um, uh, those are good beef and, uh, pork farms. I would love to get in touch with some people that way we can form a bond that way I can purchase meat and maybe we can do some trading or something for produce once we get going or just get tips for when we are ready, you know, um, to me, homesteaders and, uh, your local community is, that's where you build your bonds. That's where you connect and it's, I always was raised up knowing with everybody saying it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to keep a family. I mean, if you have a village helping each other, this family helping that family, I mean, it's like a knot, like a rope. You braid three strands together and it's tighter than one. So, uh, you know, always reach out and find somebody that's close to you or I mean, they might not be close. You might just be able to talk to them on the internet or, you know, Facebook or Messenger or call them. You know, always reach out and say, hey, uh, I need help doing this. You know, homesteaders are always there. You know, people that like-minded, they love to help. They want to help. They want to help encourage others to get out and, you know, help them do things. Uh, we don't know that many people. We Like you said, we moved here. We're transplants to Arkansas. We're from Louisiana. So, uh, we don't really know too many, 
But anytime anybody asked me anything to do with gardening, that's why I got into Master Gardeners. I wanted to help the community. I want to reach out and help people learn how to grow stuff, be more self-sustainable, not have to depend on the market. The food prices are going up right now ridiculously. I mean, I went to the grocery store just to run in for a quick thing. I bought two loaves of bread, um, two paper plates. Um, I wish I didn't have to buy paper plates, y'all, but let's be real. My kids hate dishes. I hate dishes after them. So, yeah, we're not going to fight over that. That's the only throwaway thing I buy is paper plates. So, I'm actually even transitioning away from plastic Rubbermaid containers. I'm getting all glass Pyrex, but I'm not doing away with paper plates at this moment. Um, but I bought the, two loaves of bread, two paper plates, and two different lunch meats. And I think I bought a Sprite. And Alyssa got some 99 cent strawberry limeade thingy. I don't even know. But it was $36, y'all. I didn't buy nothing. I, did, I really didn't even want to second-guess myself when she told me the total. I mean, how can somebody on a fixed income survive on that? I mean, I do know how to make bread. I do have the sourdough starter that I got from Jill over at Whisper and Willow Farm that I never got around to starting because we had all the issues come up in family emergencies. So, from now on, I think I need to be starting to make my bread. Because that is ridiculous. And I make at least three breakfast sandwiches a morning for everybody. So I, I could go through some bread. And I make homemade biscuits every night, just about. Um, I've been learning to tweak and add different things to make like garlic cheddar biscuits. Um, you know, different add stuff to it to give you a little variety. Um, I'm look, looking forward to salads more. I wish I could get my family to eat them. There's only like two of us that eat them. Um, if y'all got any tips on picky eaters, I would love to hear from y'all because I have some picky eaters. Um, I just, like I said, I just, I can't give up on reaching out to the public and the community and helping. So I'm going to be here and I think I'm just going to get on here and share my daily thoughts. I mean, I might not have a big garden to show y'all at the moment. I might not have a lot of progress. But we can get on here and talk and talk about our troubles and stuff. Somebody might be having a bad day. You might be dealing with your anxiety and your depression and need to reach out. I'm always here. I'm glad to talk and help and tell you how I help myself. It might not be able how you can help yours, but, you know, we'll figure out something. Um, I mean, just reach out to somebody, you know, never give up. And you can't, uh, not if you have a dream... You got, I saw it somewhere, I don't even remember where I saw it at the other day, but it said you have to chase your dreams because they're not going to chase you. And that's true. You reach for the stars at all times because even, you know, if you're reaching up there shooting for the stars and you miss, you're landing amongst them. So, you know, I, that's what I always tell my kids. Try, 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 do your best. And how can I lead by example if I'm not out here showing them that? So, that was this new, you know, the spring's here, it's warm. It might be daily or every couple days I'm out here. We're just going to sit in the garden, have our garden talk, you know, update you on a few things that are coming around. I will have the baby ducks to show y'all. And uh, hopefully, hey, we can watch do the pool. Hey, you know, we do everything ourselves. We build everything. We built our house, um, our tiny house. We're building our big house. Anything that needs built, we do it. We look up different ways. And sometimes we just start... Go with what we got and build what we got. Um, you know, we make it work somehow or another. You now, like I said, there's nine of us. Uh, Wes is the only one that works. So, you know, our, we are limited on what we can and cannot do. And I could go back to work, but then it would take away from me being here at the house. And I, it's a, that's a daily struggle. I'm deciding if I want to do that or not. Um, I could do some kind of arts and crafts. and still have a booth at one of the flea markets here. I'm always racking my brain on stuff that I can do. So, uh, you know, selling at the farmer's market was supposed to be kind of my outlet of being able to bring in a little extra money. But, you know, I thought it was just not the time. You can't rush something. You can't push something if it's not, not time. It'll, when it's time, or it might not ever be time, but when it is, it'll be there. The door will open. So, with that, I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all for listening. And check back in with us 
for our daily garden talks and just let me know happy gardening y'all